Hello everyone, my name is Wayne Johnson. This is Passion for Life Gallery. I'm here today with a pastel painting that I did uh, some time ago, myself on the beach here in Ecuador. But the reason for my discussion today is actually the frame that goes around it. So the purpose of this video is to take you through step by step on how to construct this frame. So stay tuned. <music> So the first thing before we can begin to construct this frame is clearly we have to think about the design. I'll explain exactly what I use for bits and how this is made. I've stained it in a black and I've stressed the edges a little bit to make it look a little bit antiqued. But the first thing we have to do before we can even begin is we have to know exactly what size our picture is going to be. Now while the picture itself is only 12 by 16, I have a backer board which is much, much bigger. So this back, backer board is about 15 and a half by 19 and a half. But this is actually, yeah, it's just under 40 millimeters by 50 millimeters. So as you'll see in the next segment of this video, uh, that's a measurement that I'm going to use to pre-cut my pieces. The other thing I'll mention is I'm going to have an extra backer board in my workshop so that I can take measurements directly from that. So I hope you enjoy this video. Okay, so now that I've determined how long my pieces need to be, I've selected my stock. I'm cutting these to 24 and 20 inches and then I'm going to make sure that they are square and to the exact dimension that I want. So this, first of all, I'm going to get these cut to length. So I've got my pieces cut to rough length. What I need to do now is to make sure one face is smooth and straight, straight, flat, and that it's square to one edge. Okay, so what I do is I just mark the edge that hasn't been planed, so I keep the orientation straight when it comes to put it to the table saw. So I've got all of my pieces flat on one surface, squared to one edge. I've marked the sides that are not, have not been squared or surfaced yet. These will go through this table saw with the straight edge to the fence and the flat surface to the table. So I'm going to cut those on the table saw now. So I've got them cut to the right width. And now I have to cut them to square up the final surface. So my pieces have been cut 
reasonably square to the right width and the right thickness. Unfortunately, thicknessing them on the table saw has left this surface especially quite rough. Although the edge is actually not too bad, but it does need to be sanded. So I'm going to set that up now. I'm going to sand these down on the rough sides with uh, starting with probably 80 grit sandpaper will be good enough. I've got my pieces now sanded and uh, I've marked the side that I sanded. It's the worst of the four sides. That's going to be um, where I cut my rabbit or notch for the picture and um, the good side will be where I cut most of my molding. Okay, so the next process will be to take them over to the router table and um, cut them. So I'm going to explain here a little bit about the rudder bit and the pattern that I'm going to be using. So I just want to explain a little bit about the bits I'm using and the final shape pattern that I'm going to be using on this molding. Okay, so this is the basic pattern. This is my full width, full height of my piece. I'm using a 3 8 um, cove bit which is going to cut this part in the front. I'm going to use a round over bit on this side, but I'm also going to include uh, the groove or the notch in the bit at the top. And I'm going to also put a small bevel on the back side, very small, about 3 16 of an inch with this beveling bit. bit. Uh, that will, that, what that will do is will leave a dark line uh, between the wall and the edge of the frame. I thought I would try that. And on the front, I'm going to be cutting a notch for the picture half an inch deep and a quarter inch wide. Now I'm going to put the uh, exact bit, the bits that I used and their sizes in the description. And uh, I'm sure that most of you have these bits if you have a router already. Okay, so I just will note one thing. The groove here I'm going to cut on the table saw rather than a router. It's a lot faster and it doesn't have to be that fancy because it's going to be hidden. The main thing is that this surface and the top edge are perfect. Okay, so we're going to set up our table saw to cut this groove. A couple things you need to remember. First thing I've marked on the end of the board, let me just get a different one here. On each board I've marked the corner where I actually want to cut the notch so I don't get confused. I can just double check that before I cut. I've set my blade height to a half inch and I always select the tooth that has the rake on this side. That's the absolute highest point. I set that to just slightly more than a half inch. And I've set the depth of my, it's going to be hard to see this on here, but I set the width from the fence to the outside again finding a tooth that has the rake on it on that side to a quarter inch. If you make the mistake of just setting the fence to a quarter inch that's the inside measurement. You're not accounting for the blade width. Your uh, notch is going to be almost three-eighths of an inch. Don't make that mistake. Okay, so now I just have to set the saw up to cut away that waste. So now I want to set it to the outside of the blade to a half inch and a quarter inch deep. So let's do that now. So I'm just focusing on where I've cut the pieces. You notice that this saw actually went in a lot deeper than it needed to. That was my mistake. Probably set it 16th or an eighth of an inch out. But the important thing is 
My groove is a half inch deep, very close, by quarter inch wide. That extra material that's been cut out by the saw blade will not be noticeable at all. So now the next process will be to cut, I'm going to cut the cove next, which will be on this surface right here. So I'm going to get that set up in the router bit and uh, we'll get that cut. So I just wanted to demonstrate how I've got my bit oriented. The bit, as I hope you can see in the camera, is just inside the fence. It's not sticking out to its maximum and it is down below its maximum as well. When I'm finished I'll be left with about a little over an eighth of an inch on the front edge where the uh, frame meets the glass or the picture. So that's how my saw is set up. I'm just going to go ahead and cut those. So I make a pass at this setting, then I'm going to move the, uh, raise the bit until I have it at the right height, make a pass there, and then finally, finally, I will move the fence over so the blade protrudes slightly more, and I'll make my final pass. Okay, so let's get to it. Okay, so now I have my round over bit set with the bearing is just slightly protruding. You can just feel it as you put the wood against it. That means I'm at my maximum uh, protrusion from the fence. And the bottom of the blade is just right at the table surface. So I'm, I'm just rounding over at this point. I'm not leaving any uh, kind of groove on there, but I will raise the blade uh, a little bit to finish it off. So I'll make my first cuts and then I'll raise the blade. So I'm following a similar procedure with the back edge with this bevel blade. I've got it so the bearing is just at the fence and I've lowered it down quite a bit. I 